we're going to be looking at the Chauvet DMX4 dimmer here and we're going to be looking at waveforms you get out of it under various modes um, now I'm sorry I haven't been able to edit this video in any way so it has to be like a whole take at a time um, so bear with me for any uh, minor fingers in the screen and things uh, so just firstly looking at this dimmer there are various dimmers like this available on the market very similar looking slightly different features um, I chose the Chevette because of the uh, switching mode option on it and also um, generally uh, maybe the build quality uh, the fusing so it's got an overall fuse as well as a fuse on each channel uh, the inputs on a hardwired mains lead which I don't particularly like but it doesn't allow your full uh, 16 amp input if you wired it to a blue socket instead of a blue plug instead of a 13 amp UK mains plug whereas some of them have a um, one of these IEC connectors on the input essentially limiting the input to 10 amps also the output connectors vary in the US market um, which has 120 volt system obviously they use their Edison connectors on it um, the only thing that I don't really like about this dimmer is the display this LED display here is quite flickery and slightly annoying and you can't turn it off in any way so if you're if you've got a theatrical production you have to make sure you sight it so you can't see that uh, from the audience uh, but generally the menu is quite easy to use you've got here uh, you've got a mode switch which switches it between DMX controlled and standalone where it just does various chases you can set there's one going now you can see on these indicators which tell you what the outputs are doing so we're back into DMX mode here so that's on my base address so that's what channel 1 is going to be doing and then we've got various other sub modes so we've got here that CHO2 means it's in two channel mode which we don't want um, so we've either got four channel mode where they each operate individually each of the four channels two channel where they operate as pairs one and two three and four so only using two instead of four DMX addresses or single channel mode where the whole lot turn on and off at once so I'm going to leave it in four channel mode so my channels are going to operate individually each channel has two output connectors there so if you had 500 watt light say you could connect two to a single channel and you'd be under your 5 amp rating we can see here we've got an overall limit of 15 amps obviously with my 13 amp mains plug I can't use all four channels fully loaded to a kilowatt um, and then also in our menu if we go to the next setting uh, this is this switch mode I was on about which seems to be um, certainly not present on all of the uh, competitors so at the moment my switch mode is on for channel 1 or I can turn it off like that and I can set this individually for each of those four channels when I'm running in four channel mode uh, so with the switch mode off uh, the dimmer works as a dimmer and with it on it works as an on off switch for loads you wouldn't want to have um, partial voltage delivered to such as um, UV tubes, fluorescent UV tubes or other, other equipment you might, might be using um, various gadgets on your set in a theatre which you'd either want to be on or off rather than being dimmed um, so what the main part of this review about that's a quick view of the um, Chevette dimmer is uh, what waveforms we get out of the dimmer because this doesn't seem to be very well documented uh, there's nothing on the web about it really uh, people are slightly worried about this switch mode damaging devices uh, because this clearly hasn't got relays inside this dimmer it simply switches the triac on at full instead of uh, at partial um, dimming uh, when it's in the switch mode so it's still using the triac circuitry and I have in fact upgraded these triacs in this dimmer from 16 amps to 24 amps to allow a sort of safety rating of almost five times the rated output of each um, channel rather than the three times off, off, offered by the 16 amp uh, triax and this is recommended by various people on the web they say that um, triax burning out is the main cause of failure of these dimmers now they are a solder in part so it is quite um, tricky you have to strip the whole dimmer down take the circuit board out 
and replace the triax. Anyway, on to our tests. Uh, so how are we going to do this? Well, we've got this oscilloscope here and I've made this cable up with an IEC uh, plug on the end and I've wired between the live and the neutral two resistors, a one mega ohm resistor and a 42 kilo ohm, I think, resistor in there, uh, which taps off about 10 volts, which I've taken to the uh, brown lead in this cable. And then the blue lead is connected to the neutral except I um, rather stupidly found out if you plug this into the oscilloscope it basically connects neutral to a ground and you trip the RCDs in your supply so I've now got the earth connected instead uh, from the IC connector so I'm going between the junction of these two resistors where I'm tapping off my it actually comes out about 15 volts on the oscilloscope and ground um, so firstly to see um, that this works I've got my a standard IEC mains lead here um, and I'm going to connect this over to my uh, funny lead and on the oscilloscope when I turn that on we can see the waveform of mains so we've got an amplitude here of about uh, three divisions and each division is five volts so about 15 volts being tapped off by my pair of resistors and my time base is 5 milliseconds per division, so I've got a frequency of about 60 hertz, which you'd expect more like 50, but um, we seem to be getting about 60 hertz there. So that's the nice um, sine wave we get from our um, main supply. And now we're going to unplug that from my direct mains connection here and plug it into my... Uh, dimmer system. So I'll plug it into channel 1 of the dimmer, which we can see switch mode is off for channel 1, so that's going to function as a dimming um, channel. So I'm going to put my master to 100% and then take channel 1 and my DMX base address is 13, so um, I'm controlling channel 1 there, you can see the light coming on and off on the dimmer my telltale light there and over on the oscilloscope as I that so that's with uh, the channel turned off we're getting quite a lot of ripple there we're getting probably about ooh, sorry we're probably getting about well it's five volts per big division so we're probably getting about two volts of ripple there no so you'd have to scale that up to what you're getting on your mains um, and then as I increase the channel on my dimmer we can see this horrible waveform coming out of the triac which you wouldn't want to expose your electronic gadgets or your um, not necessarily your uh, ultraviolet tubes uh, fluorescent lighting to until we approach I'm now at 85% and it's resuming somewhat more of a sine wave until I get to 100% and there's a slight kink there but it's pretty much as good as the um, main so if I take it down slightly you can see that kink starting to appear there really that's 90% full um, so the next thing to do is to look at it in switch mode so I go over to my dimmer here switch mode on for channel one and then we can see we've got our full output here and as I bring the dimmer down nothing happens until I get below 50% uh, when suddenly it goes down to that uh, ripple there um, an interesting thing is if I plug a significant load into that so at the moment I've only got a very small current flowing through these Two resistors and if I plug in parallel with that my one kilowatt spotlight over here and then I can turn that channel up again well with it off we're seeing a very small ripple now indeed it's virtually nothing and then in fact that's probably just because I've got this huge long wire going around the room more than anything um, why is nothing happening? Oh, because I'm in switch mode still, so my 
Winking all the lights suddenly coming on there. So if I turn my switch mode off and dim it back down again, we'll see a similar sort of distorted waveform as we were getting before. To go down to my very low ripple. And then we can repeat that test for each of the channels on the dimmer as well, just to make sure that that's not a one-off foible. Um, so now we're on channel 2, which has got switch mode off at the moment. So with no virtually no load on it, we've got that ripple. We've got a very similar waveform to full. Uh, switch mode on. See it just jumps up to full and back. Um, with my load in there and switch mode off again. Similar to channel one. I can just do it, quickly do that. I know they're all the same because I had an earlier run of this video where I had my um, property of labels here, so everyone saw my name and address, but I've covered that up now. So um, channel three. Dimming and switch mode. Probably isn't very good for my lamp. Channel four with my load on it and switch mode off. Switch mode on and without the load. So our ripples back. So in switch mode. And that's in dimming mode. So hopefully this video has been useful since this information doesn't seem to be available on the um, web more generally. Uh, people are saying how um, they're unsure about the switch mode but um, it certainly doesn't seem to be anything to worry about the um, waveform um, when it's switched on. It's more the wave when the um, load's turned off that you do get this um, ripple effect here. And uh, there you go. It's a nice little test, really. Um, excellent. Um, goodbye.